By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at an old school magic match between Lucas and Yorgo. And Lucas is playing with a deck that's green and white dominantly. It's a Lantex brew, but it also has a little bit of that black splash for Dark Heart of the Wood. And he's taking on Yorgo, and Yorgo is playing a blue and white, I would almost say classical control deck. I see Wrath of Gods in here, which I really like. I also see Ghost Ships and uh, Drakes. Now, before I kind of dive into these decks. I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that this match is played in X points. It's actually the finals of X points 14. And that means that uh, both players have to uh, take into account that there's a list with cards that have allocated points on them, right? So if you're brewing, you gotta think, I cannot spend more than 10 points uh, on, on these cards that are on the list that you're seeing right now. Now, if you wanna know more about X points, please check the description below because there you'll find more information about you know, this format. They're playing by the Atlantic rules, by the way. So that means uh, Mana Burn is real, real and Fallen Empire. Uh, you can play with that as well. Uh, also, you can find a link to their Facebook page because if you'd like to join these tournaments, you actually can. It's completely free. So you can check them out on Facebook. You can join. It's organized by Luki. He's a great guy. Um, so yeah, feel free to kind of dive into that world if, if it seems appealing to you. Uh, what, what else you can find in the deck deck are timestamps and they can be quite handy to kind of navigate through the video. For example, if you want to skip the deck deck and go straight to the action, you can click on a timestamp that's called MTG Games. Okay, now that you're completely informed, it means we're ready to go to the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Lucas. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Lucas. So this deck really reminds me a lot of the deck we saw last week when I posted the video of the final of the monthly number 13 where we also saw a Lantex deck with Dark Heart of the Wood. If you've missed that one, there's probably an info card popping up. You can click on that and that will take you to that match. It was quite exciting. I Hopefully this match is going to be as exciting as well. What we're seeing here, of course, are some like typical synergies, right, that I discussed in that video as well. So first, let's just start with Lantex. It's an enchantment from Legends, just one white, and it reads, during your upkeep, if you have less lands than your opponent, you can go through your library and you can pick three basic lands at most. It can be one or two as well. It can be zero also. That's also an option. Then you show these lands, uh, you put them into your hand and you shuffle your library and then you draw your card for turn. So when you have this kind of strategy, you want to have less lands in hand than your opponent. So obviously there is an Armageddon in this deck, but only one. So that's not the main strategy. I guess the strategy here of uh, of Lucas is simply that he doesn't need a lot of land to kind of make his deck work. You know, he's got mana birds, he's got um, uh, elves of deep shadow, a lot of things that he wants to cast are only one or two mana. So he can kind of like slow down. He doesn't have to pick up the pace. He wants to have a moment where his opponent, in this case, Yorho, is going to drop more land. So his land text will get active. Once his land text get act gets active, a lot of stuff happens. For example, he plays with Sylvan Library. Sylvan Library is a card, an enchantment from Legends as well, that allows you to look at the top three cards of your library before you draw. You can put them in any order, then you draw your card for turn. And you can also draw one or two extra cards. But every time you do that, you have to pay for life. Now, this card is really, really good with a shuffle strategy, right? Because you know the top three cards of your deck, you're probably going to take the best one and the two of them that you don't really need, you're going to put back, but then you know you're going to see them again next turn. So that's kind of annoying. Well, not with Lantex, because Lantex allows you to shuffle up your library if you have less lands than your opponent, of course. So that's really going to be a focus of Lucas. He wants to have less lands. Now, when you're also playing with Dark Heart of the Wood, you can start using the life that you gain from Dark Heart of the Wood to draw cards with your Sylvan Library, right? Dark Heart of the Wood, Enchantment from the Dark, one uh, black, one green. It reads, sacrifice a forest, gain three life. So you can start sacking your forest that you're picking up with your land tax, right? So you've got more than enough land, be lands because of land tax. You sack them to the Dark Heart, you gain life, you use that life gain to draw extra cards with your Sylvan Library, or just simply to have a lot of life so that your opponent cannot win the game, right? Because you're like, well, I've got so many life, I can take a couple of, of hits. So it's um, it's a really good strategy. On top of that, this deck is also very beefy, which I kind of like. It's not this control deck where you're waiting endlessly for your opponent to do something, or you know, and, and, and you're just waiting for a few key cards and then you win the game. No, this is really... 
uh, the land tax strategy is really there to make sure that you've got enough life, enough lands, you've got your card draw engine going with Sylvan and Dark Heart and your life engine and all that stuff. But on top of that, you're just playing with a lot of creatures as well and you want to win with old fashioned combat damage. You've got four Sarah Angels and four Urnum Jins. That's like a lot of beef. There's even a single trike in here, which I think can be quite useful against specific decks. So I'm kind of liking that. I think in this deck, maybe a Jam Day Tome would also uh, do a lot of work because you probably have a lot of, uh, of mana available. Another card that I think that would be pretty interesting, although it's a lot of uh, mana to cast, would be Book of Rast from the Dark. Because, you know, for Book of Rast, you can also exchange cards for life. Talking about exchanging cards for life, Greed could also be an interesting option. Um, looking at the fact that there are so many of these enchantment driven decks, well, a lot, I'm not sure, but well, I guess quite a lot here in X points, I think maybe people should start playing Tranquilities. Maybe people already do, but I would be tempted to kind of throw in a Tranquility in my decks after seeing these lists. Anyway, this is the list of Lucas. Love the deck photo, by the way. Lucas, really nice to see those X points chips on your cards. They're kind of indicating what cards are costing points. And remember, you cannot spend more than 10. Um, let's take a look at the deck of your opponent, Lucas. Let's have a look at uh, the deck of Yorho. And here we see the deck of Yorgo. Now this is really your control deck, right? The first thing that I notice is the color set, white and blue. That's really good for control. It's a classical control a color combination. And then I'm seeing the three Maces of If. Now Mace of If is a pointed card in this format, right? Right. It takes a point. So it means you really uh, want to play it if you put it in here because there are just so many other options to play with. So he's really choosing a control strategy with these uh, three mazes of if, also playing with the Brain Geyser. In the sideboard, we also see a pointed card, the fourth maze of if, right? So this strategy is really early game. You just want to use your mazes. You just want to wait. You want to use your swords. So you kind of want to build momentum and then later in the game you're going to throw your Sarah Angels in the mix, your your ghost ships, your drakes. Now the fact that these drakes and ghost ships have four toughness means they're quite difficult to kill so they're going to stick around a long time. He's also playing with three Jam Day Tomes so he's really in it for the long haul. He, he's not expecting a short game. He's like okay all my games are going to take long. That's absolutely fine. I'm just going to stall. I'm going to win by card advantage. I'm going to win by my control spells. And, you know, eventually I'll have so much control that I can just start swinging in with my flying army and you have nothing to do against it because I've got complete board control. Now, um, what I think makes this deck good in this particular matchup is the four disenchants, right? He's got some weapons against those mighty enchantments of Lucas. But, of course, a disenchant is only a one-for-one -one trade. He doesn't have, like, an enchantment board wipe like a Tranquility, so it could be difficult. He also doesn't have a Nevenerals disc. I think Nevenerals disc would be really good. Uh, in this deck, also because, you know, his, his his creatures are quite costly. He doesn't want to play them out until later, until he has control. Uh, the same thing goes for Jam Day Tome. You want to wait with your Jam Day Tome until later in the game. And an Evernerals Disc, especially in this matchup, it can wipe away all those nasty enchantments of Lucas. But hey, it's not in here. Uh, but we do see some, we some weapons. Like I said, he does have the four Disenchants, which are going to be super good against his deck. He can start boarding in his recall as well to maybe get back some of these Disenchants. Another strategy, of course, can be that he says, you know what, you're just going to get all the lands out of your, uh, your deck and you're going to have a lot of life. I don't really care because I'm going to have card advantage anyway with my Jam Day Tomes. I'm going to use my counter spells the right way and I'm just going to keep hitting at you with my Flying Army. That's, of course, an option as well interestingly here is that he's not playing with control magics in a control deck so i would have thought maybe control magics are also an interesting addition instead he's chosen to play with more creatures himself like for example the drakes and the ghost ships so these are some like interesting choices that somebody uh, uh makes and i think it's probably based on your knowledge about x points because he's played it a lot and he's had really good results so i'm sure that the the decisions in his deck are really based on, on this type of old school format, like on the, on the X points meta. I think when I'm looking at this deck and I'm looking at the deck of Lucas, <laughs> I think we're in for a long game, which could be really exciting or it could be boring. I think it's gonna be exciting, uh, but just to be sure, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like refill my coffee here uh, and then start uh, with the matches. So this is the deck of Jorgo and we've already looked at the deck of Lucas. That means we're ready. Let's go to the finals of X points 14. Game number one, here we go. We've got Lucas on the left, so he's playing white-green with a little bit of black. It's a land tax deck. 
And a little bit of black is there to cast Dark Heart of the Wood. And he's starting with a Birds of Paradise. He's playing against Yorho. He's playing with white and blue, a control deck. And um, he's playing with Ghost Ships and Azur Drakes and Sarah Angel. So it's not like he wants to play beef as well. It's not only just control. You know, it's not just only past turn. So I'm actually looking forward to see the Ghost Ships and the Azur Drakes, beautiful creatures. A very explosive start by Yorho with the uh, Sapphire and the Felwer Stone. Passing turn to Lucas here. Wow, look at that. Finding a Soul Ring. Does he have an Urnum Jin playing with four Urnum Jins? No, there's an Icy Manipulator instead. That's pretty good as well, of course. Now let's see what Yorho can do here. Playing out a Tundra. He now has enough to cast a uh, Azur Drake. Ooh, there we see a Ghost Ship. So two, four Flyer from the Dark. Three blue to regenerate the Ghost Ship. Let's see what Lucas can do. He's got enough mana to cast a Sarah Angel as well. He's playing with four Sarah Angels. But I mean, this is not an ideal start for Lucas because yorho has got all those mana rocks and that means it's going to be hard for him to get an active land text in this game. It's not the only strategy that he has though. A Sylvan would also be great at this point in the game. Yorho tapped out, so he's got no counter magic open. Lucas looking at his options. Tapping four. Okay, there we see an Urnum. So that's some pressure I'm expecting. There's a tap down. Interesting, tapping down the land. So choosing just to take those two damage potentially from the ship. And what I wanted to say is that I'm expecting a sword to plowshares on the side from Yorho here. He's of course playing with four swords. I believe, or was it three? I believe it's four swords. And also um, Lucas is playing with four swords as well. So those swords are going to be great against the ghost ships. And Yorho now really kind of in the tank, trying to figure out what to do here. And he's going to tap. And okay, there's another Azur Drake attacking with the ship, dealing two points of damage here to Lucas, going to drop to 18 and a pass. There's an attack by the Urnum. I'm just expecting four damage here for Yorho. Yorho dropping to 16. Lucas going through the cards again. What can he do here? Putting the cards down, looking at the board state. It's not too bad if you're Lucas. I mean, you're dealing four damage and you're only taking two. And he can start using his Icy Manipulator next turn on the creatures as well. I mean, it makes sense when your opponent... Um, ooh, what's he going to do? Another Icy. Full control here. So he could choose to tap down the blue sources. He's going to tap down the Tundra. What else is he going to tap down? He could go for the Sapphire or, of course, the basic island because then Yorho doesn't have double blue for a potential counterspell. That does mean that he's going to choose just to take four points of damage. That's exactly what he does. Doesn't really mind the damage. Perhaps he's got a dark card in hand. There we see an attack for four. So he's going to drop to 18 here. Was on, uh, on uh, sorry, to 14. Was on 18, dropped to 14. There's a Felwer Stone by Yorho. And with that Felwer Stone, he can only make uh, white or green mana. There's an attack with the Urnum. Yorho dropping to 12. So it's looking kind of good for Lucas here. There we see a Sylvan. There's a Lantex. And he cannot use the Lantex yet because he's got three lands. And Yorho has three as well. Perhaps I would have waited with the Lantex. And look at that. He's not tapping down the blue sources anymore. So he's going to go for the creatures here. And perhaps I would have waited with the tax to kind of see if Yorcha would play out another land. Although chances are quite slim. Ooh, there we see a Sarah Angel. Quite nice. Not the end of the world though for Lucas because he can still attack with his Urnum. And he can say, you know what, if you want to block it, we'll, uh, you know, you'll lose your Sarah here. He can just keep the Icy open to play defense with those. He's on 14. He's looking at the top three cards because of the Sylvan. I don't expect him to draw extra cards here, to be honest, unless he really finds something juicy. Attacking here. There's the swords. That means he's going to go back up to 18. There we see a Dark Heart of the Wood. And this Dark Heart of the Wood Sylvan combo is really nice because he can start sacking force for three lives and also activate his land text with that and, of course, use the life to draw extra cards. So this is really, really good for, for Lucas. So he's going to take some damage here. He's going to drop back to 18 again. Shouldn't he drop to 16 here? Let's see what Yorho can do. I'm 
probably asking about the enchantment. So one of the things that Lucas can do here is on end step of Yorgo. Oh, there we see a Chaos Orb. Then he's probably going to activate the Chaos Orb and then Lucas needs to respawn before he knows the target. Exactly. If I was Lucas, I would probably sack at least one forest. So I would have Lantex activation. Exactly. Sacking one forest. So he's going to go up, I believe, then to 19. Took two damage from the Drake earlier. Go to 16. Take three. Go up to 19 again. Yeah, so he's on 19. And I wonder what Jorgo is going to flip on. All three enchantments are really, really good. Yeah, I think... Or Lantex or Dark Heart of the Wood at this point. But it's it's a tough one. I would be tempted to go on Dark Heart of the Wood. Because it can give him so much life and it can keep his Lantex active. He can, of course, also flip on the Lantex and then... He's got Dark Heart of the Wood and Sylvan combo, which is also really good, right? Because he can exchange his forests for life. Then again, he has a Lantex trigger next turn. Oh, this is tough. I think maybe I would go for Lantex in this situation. But it's it's really difficult. I'm sure Jorgo can make a better decision than I can. Because I'm sure he's dealt with his fair share of Lantex decks in X points. We don't know what he's going to flip on yet, but we'll see if he hits. Looks like he's going to flip on the tax. Okay, I think they've got a gentleman's agreement or something. Again, I'm not a big fan of this. I always want to see flips. I know that people, people disagree with this. Feel free to disagree, of course. We can all have our own opinion, but I really love to see orb flips. I think it's such a, uh, such a big part of old school magic. But that's just me. Um, Lucas on 12 now. There we see a Winter Orb that's just not going to do much. And I think a decision to flip on the Lantex was a good one here because we can see that Lucas had another Dark Heart in hand. And now, you know, Lucas is out of cards. He doesn't have that card drawing engine that he wants to have with his Lantex. Yorgo dealing two points of damage. So it looks like Lucas is on 13 at the moment. Another Sarah Angel! If Yorgo can find... A solution here for those ICs. This game could be over quickly, but look at the flying army, by the way, that uh, that Yorgo has. It's quite impressive. Azur Drake, go ship two Sarah Angels. Lucas here looking at the top three cards, and now it's hard, right? Because you want to draw extra cards, but you're under pressure as well. So it's going to go for one extra card, going to drop to nine. Going to play a forest. Remember, remember, those forests are also life because of the dark heart of the wood. So, he, I mean, he's not dead yet. But it's going to be tricky for him. There we do see an untap. It looks like he's putting the card back because maybe Lucas wants to do something before he draws. Decides not to. The problem, of course, is he needs the Ices to tap down the Ceres or else he takes too much damage. It's going to drop to five. Tapping for another creature here, another ghost ship. So it's really flooding the board with flyers here. There we see an untap. So he's kind of forcing Lucas to start sacking his forests. And that's what you want to do with the Zark Heart of the Woods. I mean, it's a good card, but it's only good as long as your opponent's got forests to sack. There's a, another savanna that he can sack. Remember, the dual lands are also forests and planes. So you can also sack them to the Dark Heart. Yorgo wants to attack again, tapping down the two Sarah. So he's going to take six damage here. So he's got to start sacking Forest. So he's going to drop, I believe, to two. It's looking really good for Yorgo here. Remember, this is just game number one, though. Both players are going to go into their sideboards after this is over, but we're not there yet. Lucas can still stall for a long time. He's got four Forests there. That equals 12 life. There is another Winter Orb that's not going to do much. And Yorgo drawing again, wants to attack, probably going to tap down. Interesting, could have used his Mana Birds. Maybe he wants to block here with the Mana Birds. Going to sell, yes, going to sack the lands for the six points of damage, going to stay on two. There's a Jam Day Tome. So that Jam Day Tome actually um, is, is good for Yorgo, but it also means that the Wind Orbs now are becoming a little bit annoying for Yorgo. Not more than annoying. Tapping, ooh, I thought it was tapping four. Looking at the Birds of Paradise to use it instead. Does he have, for example... Okay, he's got a Sarah Angel, so that's a blocker. 
There's a counter spell on the Sarah. Yeah. Good decision by Jorgo when you're winning. And and look at the at the lands now. Lucas only has one birds open to tap down. I think this is well not it. He can sack. He's gonna attack. No, that's it. Exactly, that's it. I thought, is it it or not? Do I have my math correct? But yeah, this is it. Lucas only having that one mana birds to use one icy manipulator to tap something down. He had two forests, I believe, on the battlefield that equals six life, but he would take too much damage because he was already on two. So this is a game one win here for Jorgo. That means that both players are going to go into their sideboards and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's one game up for Jorgo here in X-Points Finals number 14. Jorgo, the control player here, looking at his hand. Lucas doing the same. Ooh, look at that. Lucas taking a mulligan. So he'll be going down to six. And I think if you're Lucas, you're just really hoping to get your land tax activated. That's quite important when you're playing with land taxes, obviously. It looks like Jorgo is keeping his hand. And gonna draw seven. And if he wants to keep, he's got to put one card on the bottom of the library. The card is going to the bottom, and there's the opening, starting with the Lantex and pass. Again, not ideal for Lucas here to be on the play, because he's, a, he's the, uh, the tax player, and now he has to make the decision. He's not going to play anything out, so he's going to make it tough here for Jorgo. Remember, game one, Jorgo had a fantastic start with a Sapphire and a Fower Stone, and uh, now he's going to make a decision. Am I going to play a basic, allowing Lucas here to start activating the tax? And once you're in the tax mill, it's really difficult to get out of it. Yeah, he is going off the tax plan, playing a desert into a Felwer Stone. And that means that he can start using his tax. So if you're Lucas, you're super happy. And now Lucas got to make the new decision. Ooh, look at that. I think he's got a dark out of the wooden hand. Going for a swamp, two basic forests. Drawing a card for turn. Looks like he's going to have a land drop off his own. If he's got a Dark Heart of the Wood, it kind of makes sense. There is a Sylvan. So if he can have Dark Heart next turn, it's a lot of trouble here for Jorgo. It's just so good when you've got those three enchantments on the board. You have just have this, this live game card drawing engine. It's insane. So Jorgo's got to find a strategy to battle this. Could go for a second blue. Ooh, going for Chaos Orb. He's going to flip. And he's going to take care of the Sylvan. And there's a pass. So he's not going to go for the tax. Going to go for the Sylvan instead. Expecting, of course, that Dark Heart of the Wood coming up. No, we're not seeing that. Interesting. Ramping up here. There is an Icy Manipulator. That Icy can, can be quite annoying for Jorgo. Jorgo now is four mana open. Ooh, no Azur Drake, no Ghost Ship. Does that mean that he's got counter magic? There is a mana birds, Birds of Paradise. Interesting how this uh, game is unfolding. Both players haven't been able to put a big creature on the board yet. Remember, they're playing with uh, four Sarah Angels both. There is a tap down of the Tundra in the upkeep of Jorgo. Now Jorgel has to make a decision. Is he going to drop another land? No, he's not. Doesn't want to activate the tax probably. Or he simply doesn't have extra land, of course. That's also an option. There's the Dark Heart of the Wood. So he can start sacking now. And okay, there's a disenchant on the tax. That makes absolute sense. So Jorgel finding the disenchants here. There's a tap down of the Tundra again. And now Jorgel can play out his lands. Another desert. And those deserts can be quite good in, uh, in a creature-heavy format like X-Points, but in this particular matchup, they're not going to be great. Because Lucas is only playing with... Well, he's not going to attack with his Mana Birds, of course, and the other creatures he's playing with are Urnum Jin and Sarah Angel. A lot of toughness in those creatures. And there's a pass again, a tap down of the Tundra. So both players kind of playing the control game, unable to really put pressure on each other. There is... No, I wanted to say another Felber Stone, but that was already there. He's got five mana. He could make white mana. He can, if he has it, he can play a Sarah Angel. He can also play an Azur Drake, of course. 
So Yorcha really in the tank here playing a Sarah Angel. Let's see if Lucas has an answer. Oh, no swords. It was a soul ring instead. For a moment, I thought he's going to swords the angel. He is not, though. So this is good news for Yorcha. I mean, Lucas got the, yeah, he's got the ice. He's going to tap down the Sarah Angel. Let's see if Yorcha can put some more pressure on the board. Are we going to see another Sarah Angel here? Oh, we're going to see a recall coming in from the sideboard. Is he going to recall for the disenchant? Wrath of God is going to go. Ooh, okay, so he's taking two cards back. There's his Disenchant and, of course, his Chaos Orb. So that's a really good trade, right? So Recall doing some work here. And there's a pass. So he could choose to Disenchant the Icy Manipulator here, put some pressure on. There's another Mana Birds. There's a Bayou on the side of Lucas. So nothing really to, to worry Yorcho too much. There is a Disenchant on the Icy. And there's the attack by the Sarah. There's a chump with one of the mana birds. Kind of makes sense here. Lucas got more than enough mana. There we see Chaos Orb and a pass. I mean, I wonder if you're Yorcha, if you really want to use your Chaos Orb here on the Dark Heart. He's going to attack. So we see Lucas now dropping to 16 and a pass. So for Yorcha, this is ideal. If he's got like a counter spell in hand, he can kind of control the game. Attacking again with the Sarah. Ooh, look at that. Lucas dropping to 12. So things are going really quickly now. There's a Jam Day Tome from the side of Yorcha. More trouble here for Lucas. Remember, Lucas is already down a game. Has got to win this if he wants to, uh, to stay in it. Or are we going to see Yorcha? Ooh, interesting. Using a Divine Offering to take care of the Winter Orb, and of course he does that because he wants to use the mana for his Jam Day Tome. And now we see Lucas on 8. He's going to draw cards with the Tome. It's looking really good for Yorcho here. Lucas dropping to 4. I mean, he's got the Dark Heart, but you don't want to use a Dark Heart this way. I mean, he can sack a lot of force still. Like, we're not there yet, but it's going to be really tough. There's the attack. There's a block with the Mana Birds. Another card for Yorcho in a pass. And there's an Urnum Jin. Are we going to see a Counterspell? No, we're not. Of course, Yorcha also still has the Chaos Orb. Doesn't really have to worry much. There is another attack, so he's going to sack a Forest. So he'll be on three life now. This is difficult for Lucas. At least he's got the Urnum to put some pressure on, but Yorcha is drawing so many more cards because of the Jam Day. Oh, there's another Sarah Angel. This is a big problem for Lucas. Are we also going to see a Swords here? Yep. Oh, nice. Loving this. Saving the Urnum from the Swords to Plowshares. So at least he still has the Urnum. That's something. But it's not much, though. There's the attack. Is Yorcho going to double block, for example? He's going to use the Chaos Orb. Still too bad we're not seeing any flips, though, but it is what it is. And there we're going to see a Swords on one of the Angels. So Yorcho gaining four more lives, going to go up to 26. The most important thing here for Yorcho is that he can keep attacking and using the book. I mean, he's got huge card advantage. And now we see Lucas falling down to two. He's got to sack more Forests. Probably going to just going to see a pass and an end step Gem Tome activation from Yorcho. Let's see. Okay, there's an Urnum, so some more pressure on the board here. There's a card. Are we going to see Counter Spell here? He doesn't really have to, though, because he's on 26. He can take some hits from the Urnum. And, okay, there's a Counter Spell on the Urnum, so Yorcho just doesn't want to have any creatures on the side of Lucas. There is another attack. So he's going to drop to one, constantly sacking forests to stay alive. So next turn he'll have to sack two forests to stay alive. There's another GMD Tome. I mean, Yorcha just winning to some pure card advantage. And Lucas, of course, being forced to sack his own forests. I mean, this is really tough for Lucas here. There is another Plains. What can he do? There is a Swords on the Sarah. Okay, this is something. Because Yorcho obviously needs a creature to win this. I believe it's going to go up to 30 now, if I'm not mistaken. Not 100% sure, but he's got a lot of life. Let's put it at that. 
And Lucas is on one. He's staying alive. But Yorcha, of course, has double Tome on board. So I'm sure he's going to find a flyer to deal some more damage. Tapping. Okay, good. Just going to find a, another card with a gem de Tome. And it looks like he's just passing turn. There's a Mana Bird, which is another chump blocker here for Lucas. So Lucas is staying alive. Which is all that he can really do at this stage in the game. If he can find attacks, he can start taxing like crazy. And, you know, he, I can see him getting back into it, but it's going to be tough. We see a strip mine. He could strip the Savannah, I guess. Ooh, I would have stripped the Bayou here because Bayou is also a black source. Interesting that he's not going for that. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but Bayou you can also sack to the Dark Heart. Gonna find another card. He wants to counter this orb. Cannot do it. Pass turn. Ooh, I would have expected Lucas here maybe to flip on the on the gem detail. Maybe he's just focused on potential creature threats that he wants to use the uh, the chaos orb for. There we see a maze of it from Yorgo. Yorgo discarding cards here. He's having such a huge card advantage. There we're gonna see the activation. Are we going to see a disenchant now in response of that activation? Would make sense. You really want to keep your jam day tomes to keep drawing cards. There we see it. There's a divine offering. Ooh, I like the timing of this. That also means four life. Are we going to see a counter spell? He's going to find another card. He could first draw the card though. If it's a counter spell, he can still counter. Anyway, um, it's gone. Does mean that Lucas goes up for life because a divine offering gives you life equal to the casting cost of the artifact destroyed. So he's going to go back up to five. I mean, wow, is Lucas really going to go come back into this game? That would be a super comeback. I mean, I've, I've seen weirder comebacks, but it would be completely unexpected. Yorgo is ahead so much, also with cards, with, because of those Gem Day Tomes. There's a disenchant on the last Gem Day Tome. This is pretty big. Can Yorgo protect it? He can first find a card, though. See if it's a counterspell, and then he can play the counterspell. He is not. Interesting. I think maybe Yorgo is not aware of this. What you can do with the Jam Day Tome, if your opponent plays a Disenchant or does something, you can also always say, okay, now you're passing priority. In response, I'm going to activate the Tome. You're going to keep priority. And if it's a counter spell, you can play out the counter spell, counter the Disenchant. That's something you can do. And it's, it's really good. I've done it a zillion times with my Timmy deck. There we see attacks on the side here of Lucas. And he can start activating the attacks. Oh, he's getting back into this. Yorgo starting to count his lands. He's like, oh, man. He's, he was so close. Remember, Lucas was on one. And now he's getting completely back into this because he's got his tax dark heart machine going. This is super bad news. I guess the only good news for Yorgo here is that uh, uh, Lucas already played out lots of lands, and I mean, how many basic forces can he have? Well, quite a lot, actually. But uh, it looks like Yorgo kind of lost momentum here. He had a moment. Okay, maybe he can get momentum back with the Sarah. No, he can't. There's another Swords. He's going to go up to 34, I believe. Or maybe 44, even. It's, it's, it's hard for me to keep track of the life totals, the dice being quite small. And uh, we see Lucas being on, on 5 still. Playing out of Sarah Angel. Oh, man. And Yorgo asking about the amount of cards in his library. I mean, if Yorgo's really on 44, he can take loads of hits from the Sarah. Are we going to see... Okay, an Azur Drake. Not a ghost ship, but an Azur Drake. This is really nice for Lucas because, of course, the Sarah doesn't tap. Okay, he's got the mace still, Yorgo. I forgot about the mace. He doesn't even have to take the damage. Oh, man. Okay, this is good news. He's going to play his swords. Uh, that means, I believe, he's going to go back up to 9. Attack with the Drake. Lucas is going to drop to 7. So Lucas being on 7. I believe Yorgo's on 44. There's another Sarah Angel by Lucas. Another Maze of If by Yorgo. And you kind of see Lucas not no longer using the tanks. I don't think he's got anything in the, in the, in the tank anymore. But, I mean, it's great, Lucas, that you're still alive. I mean, there was this moment you were on one. You had a Sarah Angel against you. Yorgo had two Jam Day Tomes. 
it was just insane. So both players kind of asking how many swords did you play out, how many counter spells, yada, yada, yada. So you kind of have an idea. Disenchance, of course, also important in this matchup. But, I mean, yeah. This could be decided by decking. Who knows? We're seeing four forests on the side of Lucas, right? So that's 12 life. Yorgo has been using those tomes like crazy, so I wonder how many cards he still has in his library. It's looking pretty thin there. Counting his mana. How many mana does he have? There's a pass. There's a pass. Okay, so we're kind of like both players trying to find an answer. I mean, Wrath of God could be something. Sarah Angel, of course, can be something, because then he's got two flyers and... Lucas only has one. The nice thing for Yorgo here are those mazes of if that he can use offensively as well. So he can attack. And then if uh, Lucas says, I'm going to block your Azur Drake, he can use the maze to get it out of combat. So he can still save it. There we see a swords on the Sarah Angel. Wow. He's going to go up to 48, right? This is insane. Lucas looking at his hand. He's like, okay, I'm not dying, but am I really winning? <laughs> <laughs> counting his cards again. You should ask Yorgo how many cards do you have in your library? I mean, it's looking really, really thin. Tapping four mana. Are we going to see an Urnum here? Oh, we're going to see a Greed. Oh, I kind of missed that Greed. Was that in the sideboard, perhaps? I missed it during the deck deck. Nice to see the Greed. He's going to draw even more land. So I guess it's conclusion of Lucas's. I've got less cards in my library than Yorgo. So if I want to win this, I got to find the right pieces and I got to put some more pressure on the life total. But that's going to be super tough for Lucas. Armageddon! Counterspell on the Armageddon. Oh, that's too bad. I love that move, that Armageddon. You can play Armageddon and while it's still on the stack, you can sack your lands to your dark heart, right? I think. Can you do that actually? Oh, and I guess it's game. He's saying, I cannot win this anymore. Wow, I think the Armageddon, I guess, was the only out for Lucas. So maybe it's nice, Lucas, when you're seeing this match is to let me know in the comments below, like, what was your train of thought and, and, and why was the Armageddon your only out? Um, yeah, because I would love to hear from you. But I think this means that, Yorgo, you are the winner of X Points 14. So uh, well done. And um, yeah, that's it. That's the game of today. Now, if you've enjoyed X Points, oh, well, wait, let me first thank the players. Thank you, uh, Lucas, and thank you, Yorgo, for sharing your skills right here on Timmy Talks. Also, special thanks to Luki, who sends me these matches. It's really uh, a joy for me to do these finals. And uh, I would also like to thank you for watching another match right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below what kind of happened there at the end. I think that the Armageddon was the only out for Lucas here. He just didn't have another way to, to win this game. Again, I could be wrong. So Lucas, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Uh, Jorge, congratulations with the victory. Now, before you go, I would like to ask you to do a few things to support the channel. The first thing that you can do is uh, you can like this video. So just hit that thumbs up. It really helps a lot. The second thing is leave a comment and the third thing is sharing this on your socials. All these things really, really help and they help me move, um, grow Timmy Talks, you know, um, which is my number one hobby right now, making these videos. It's a, it's a joy to do. I guess playing Magic is even more fun. So I guess that's my number one hobby. Um, what else is there? Oh yeah, of course, before I forget, we do have a Timmy Talks Patreon. So um, yeah, if you want to help me keep the channel afloat, I'm currently saving up for a brand new camera to use for my live streams. So uh, any support with that would be really, really appreciated. Please check out the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Uh, it's only a dollar uh, a month and uh, then you can already join the Timmy Talks program. And the cool thing is you get access to the Timmy Talks uh, Discord. You can then also join the online tournaments that I, uh, I organize every other month or so. It kind of depends. Um, and also your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. For example, Yorgo is a, pa a patron, has been for a long time. Super thank you, Yorgo, for your support. Um, and his name is in the end scroll. So yeah, if, if you'd like that, check out the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Go there, have a look. Maybe it's something for you, maybe not. But I would appreciate it if you would take a moment to, to go over there and have a look on the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Okay, now 
thank you again for watching. If you're new to the channel, please uh, remember uh, or consider uh, subscribing and ring that bell. And for now, we are gonna go to the end scroll. Let's take a look at the amazing, wunderbar, fantastic channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Zeke!